And now, WBRZ Sunday Journal. Welcome to Sunday Journal. I'm John Pasterak. Today, Merry Christmas from Holly Clegg. She's Louisiana's cookbook queen. We sit down with her in her kitchen to talk about everything from Christmas to her latest cookbook to her courageous fight against stomach cancer. Merry Christmas! Yes, my favorite time of year to do these segments with you, to share all my easy holiday recipes. It's the most wonderful time of the year for Holly Clegg, a time when she shares her favorite holiday recipes and last minute gift ideas. I brought you a great little present. These are so useful. These spiced walnuts, you could use them on salads. Yeah, that's a great idea. A great hostess gift or teacher gift. She's Louisiana's cookbook queen, selling more than a million and a half cookbooks. Her motto is trim and terrific. Her books offering special recipes to help those living with everything from cancer and diabetes to arthritis. The book has all anti-inflammatory recipes, just really easy, healthy recipes. Now she's gone from health promoter to patient. Holly is facing her toughest test, and it's not in the kitchen, it's in the hospital. In August, she was diagnosed with stage four stomach cancer. She's undergone multiple rounds of chemotherapy, and now she's facing surgery. But despite a tough year, Holly says Christmas is still the most wonderful time of the year for family, faith, and food. And we're in Holly Clegg's kitchen. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Why is this holiday so special to you? Well, all the holiday seasons are special because it's fun. I love the food. I love the festivities. But um, this holiday season means a lot to me that I'm getting to enjoy it. And as everybody knows, I've been diagnosed with stomach cancer. So uh, it has a little different twist to it. We're going to talk about that in a second. But uh, you're always preaching trim and terrific. What's your biggest tip to folks this holiday season to make it a trim and terrific Christmas and New Year's? Well, as I always say, I don't think you have to change what you eat. You just change how you prepare it. And that's why I'm around with all my cookbooks, the new guy's guide to eating well. You could actually cook um, all your favorite meals, and it's all in here. You know, that's what I've always tried to explain to people is it's so easy to eat healthy. And I'm just sort of trimming the recipe down but keeping it terrific. And this really is a preventative men's health, but it's for the whole family. And it's important to, um, we want to be beautiful from the inside out with our food. And I give you the tools. I guess my goal is to give people uh, the means to cook easy recipes and inspire them to cook at home because it's so much better for you. Guys, guide to eating well. Wait a minute. Are you saying us guys don't eat well? Yeah, no, I'm, sure I'm going to make you eat better. What's great about <laughs> it, you can see the contents of the book. It's fatigue, heart disease, food for the mood. I bet you that got your attention. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Obesity and diabetes, arthritis and joint pain, cancer, GERD, fix it fast or fix it slow, and, of course, grilling and hunting. But it really is the contents of the book will guide a man and his family to really um, for preventative recipes, and each chapter is loaded with pictures. Oh, there's a crawfish burger. I knew you'd like that. And actually, here's the black eyed pea and wild rice salad we're going to make for New Year's. And all the different chapters, and it has a D for diabetic recipes throughout the book, because that's just the healthiest way to eat. And that way, you have sort of indication. Uh, that, of course, and then we have all my books, you know, Kitchen 101, Gulf Coast Favorites. And my passion is cooking, and my passion is to show you that you can cook healthier and enjoy your food. Gulf Coast favorites, that's our, our special. We cook a lot of recipes out of that Well, one. in Louisiana, the seafood, the Gulf Coast favorites is my Louisiana and Southern book, and it highlights all your seafood recipes from crawfish, shrimp, fish, but all good Southern food, too. And then Kitchen 101, I think that's probably my easiest book. And there's a great crock pot section in here. Um, it's good for the novice in the kitchen or good for the busy person that doesn't have time to cook. And then too hot in the kitchen, you know. Well, I've always been hot in the kitchen, huh? <laughs> That's what you tell me, JT. <laughs> uh, and then we have um, the arthritis book, Eating Well to Fight Arthritis, again, with focuses on inflammation. What's great about Guy's Guide to Eating Well, each one of those chapters are in this book, and it's uh, a combination. And I talk like a man in here. It's like... The home team advantage is over here. So it's fun, it's informative, it's a great resource of information. And Curtis Chastain, uh, who has a men's health practice, uh, co-authored the book with me. So it has some good, good, good information in it. Listening to you now, looking at you now, it's hard to believe that you are battling cancer. 
Right. It's sometimes hard for me to believe, too, you know, and I guess, and it's sort of an oxymoron. We say, what are you doing with cancer? You wrote the book, Eating Well uh, Through Cancer, and um, I was diagnosed with stomach cancer August 8th, and it is sort of hard to believe. I'm a healthy cookbook author. Yeah, you're, you're healthy. I mean, you eat healthy. You live healthy. Uh, do you remember, what do you remember about, did you have any symptoms, anything that, that maybe was telling you something was wrong? You know, it's hard to believe and no one could because I had five days of symptoms. We were actually at the Grand Hotel, my husband and I, and fortunately I think I eat like a man, big meals, and I was eating every night. We were going out to dinner and I thought my stomach at the end of the night felt distended and then I started these belchings that had like a, honestly a rotten egg smell. And I called my gastro doctor, Ronnie Boudreau, right when I got back in town. I said, something is wrong, five days of symptoms. And every day, I would night, I would feel bloated. By the morning, I'd go on a walk and feel fine. But it shows you have to listen to your body. I told everybody, you know your body, and you should listen to it. And that's the advice I give. So I was very determined and told him, I said, something's not right. And he listened to me as a physician and did an endoscopy. And he said he thought maybe it was gallbladder and came out and said, Holly, you have stomach cancer. And if you're going to be diagnosed with stomach cancer when you're sort of, you know, under the influence of uh, after an endoscopy, I was like, oh, okay. Now, it affected my husband a little differently. And, but once I got out of, you know, the anesthesia, we were like, how could this happen? Um, you know, I met MD Anderson. And, uh, you know, I was fortunate enough, they had the No Stomach for Cancer Symposium going on, the nationwide one, they asked me to be a speaker. And I think what I, my message was, as my doctor said, Holly, you just had bad luck. There was, we did genetic testing, there wasn't anything. But cancer does not discriminate. It doesn't, you know, it affects whether you're healthy, not, some of that, it's out of our control. But I do think what has made a big difference in my treatment is that I'm healthy. I have eaten healthy, I've exercised, I lead a healthy lifestyle. So these books are so important that you do that because it's helping me to fight cancer. Just finished my round of chemo, uh, four months worth of it, and I'm still here smiling, having a good time, and I do think I battled cancer through chemo because of being a healthy lifestyle. What do they tell you? What's your outlook? Well, I have, uh, on December 21st, I have my first surgery. It's a heated high pec. It's a heated chemo. And the, if that all goes well, my neck, not if, when that goes well, I will have a complete gastrectomy. And when you all hear about it, understand that's a plus. I made it to the finish line. And you can eat without a stomach. Um, it's a lot of little small meals. And uh, it's crazy what we all like to do. Uh -huh. Uh, so, you know, I have a long road ahead of me, but I'm a fighter, and like everybody else there who gets a cancer diagnosis, it's shocking, and you just have to put on those. Uh, in fact, my husband, a friend had these made, and he had T-shirts made. It says, Team Clegg, knock out, and go Holly, G-E-A-U-X. So I want to give this to you so well, you'll thank, thank of me uh, going through this. Well, if anybody's going to knock it out, it's going to be Holly Clegg for sure. Well, and look, you've, you've written cookbooks, you've sold uh, one and a half million cookbooks, and you're always taking care of others through your recipes, through your ideas, through your uh, trim and terrific uh, preaching and your philosophy. Well, now people are taking care of you. What's that like for you? Oh, JP, it is so overwhelming. I mean, I went to a book signing in Barnes & Noble, and the acquaintances that came up brought me presents saw me ring the bell, we put it on Facebook and I have a carrying bridge. It's been um, Baton Rouge, thank you. I, I gained so much support from so many people out there just from everything, I don't think I list, I read everything everyone writes. I might not answer, I try to, but um, it's been, uh, I don't think I could have done it. One of the doctors I was telling him at MD Anderson, I was saying I have this outpour of people from all over the United States, but Baton Rouge is special, of course, and the surrounding areas of Louisiana. And he said, you do gain strength from that. Mm -hmm. So uh, in fact, sometimes if I, I slap my face and say, Holly, get it together, and I thought, you have way too many people depending on you besides <laughs> your family. And of course, my husband and family have been wonderful. But I'm still trying to be in control a little bit, because it is hard to receive. It's easier to give, I think. Mm -hmm. Uh, recipes are important to you. 
What's the recipe? What's the number one thing? The number one thing you want other people to learn from your case, your story? Um, the number one thing I want people to learn from my story uh, is that, you know, don't get discouraged that I have cancer and you, I write healthy cookbooks because I think health and eating properly and making good changes, not smoking, exercise, and using all my trim and terrific cookbooks is so important because, as I said, not only does it help me fight my cancer, it's going to help everybody out there fight whether you have arthritis, you break a leg, no matter what's going on, and um, it's preventative. It's going to keep you from having diabetes. I'm going into these surgeries with no heart problems, no diabetes, not o obese, and I think that is such a plus that will help me beat those statistics out there. You're trim and terrific. I'm trim and terrific, and I intend to stay that way. Um, where can people get your book? You know that Christmas is coming up, and this new book, for, yes, the, for yeah. the guy in your life, this could be a great present. It's, you know, you never know what to get a guy, a friend, a, a neighbor, a, you know, boyfriend, father, uncle, anybody, brother, all of them. But uh, I left autographed cookbooks at all the Barnes and Nobles in Baton Rouge. Um, they have signed copies of all my books. And you could get it online on um, my website. You can order directly if you need an autographed copy. And of course, it's on Amazon or Barnes and Noble. But you know, and I've said it to so many people before, if you get my book, you have to use it because I'm going to steal it back. It's meant <laughs> to be used and abused. You know, JP, I love it when people bring me dirty books to sign. I mean, you know, with cooking stains, of course. Boy, you don't want to see my book. <laughs> I know. What kind of Christmas is it going to be for Holly Clegg? It's going to be a different Christmas. We were going to go to New York to my son's, and since my move my scheduled surgery to December 21st, because they don't like you to be too long between treatment of ending chemo and that, and because I responded so well, so all my family's coming to Houston, and they said, we'll find you wherever you are. So all six grandchildren, my kids and their spouses, they rented a house in Houston, and I should be out of the hospital by Christmas, but no matter what, it, it doesn't matter where you are, it matters who you're with. And I'll have all my family around me, and that's what's important. It'll be a Merry Christmas indeed. It will be. It or, will be. Remember this bit of inspiration that cancer is not a death sentence. It's a life sentence, and the sentence is, I will beat cancer, and you will beat cancer. You're so right, and I do plan to beat this cancer. It's not an easy road, as anybody knows, but I can do this, and I will beat cancer. I'll, I got chills hearing that. You're right; it is a life sentence, but that's that's it's a, your life can always change, and you get a new normal. And mm. I have a new normal. Mm -hmm. I will be a survivor. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you too. Well, coming up, Holly shares some last-minute Christmas recipes and gift ideas. But first, she's got a special gift for one of you. Merry Christmas, I'm Holly Clegg, and I've got an early Christmas present for one lucky viewer out there. How about a set of my cookbooks, including my latest book, Guide's Guide to Eating Well. All you've got to do is be the first one to correctly answer this Yuletide trivia question. This Louisiana city is famous for its Christmas lights, meat pies, and the Cane River. Name that city. The first viewer to send the correct answer to JP wins my cookbooks. Send your answers to JP at WBRZ.com. That's JP at WBRZ.com. Merry Christmas. Sunday Journal continues right after this. Today on Sunday Journal, Merry Christmas from Holly Clegg. We take you into the Louisiana Cookbook Queen's kitchen for some last minute recipes and gift ideas even Santa would love. Yeah, you know, I'm really excited about this first segment. It's all from my arthritis book. Now, don't turn up your nose. You're thinking arthritis. It's really anti-inflammatory recipes. What's great about them, they're all diabetic delicious diabetic recipes and you would never know. So we're gonna start with go. spiced walnuts. Ooh, spiced walnuts. Yeah, that really sounds Christmassy. Yeah. It is, and you know, this is really one of the most popular recipes on my blog, and I'm thinking, why is it so popular? And I haven't made it in a while, in all honesty. And I made it and I'm like, 
Oh my God, it's sugar and spice and a little heat. And it everything just, nice. And everything nice. Okay. That's have heat. Okay. okay. Simple to make. You just heat up a tablespoon of uh, oil. We just heated that up. And then we toasted our walnuts, as you saw before, uh, for about 375 for about five minutes. You're going to put it in here. Okay. And then you're just going to coat. Cut them around on the heated foil. And now this is our seasoning. So you just have a tablespoon of sugar, a little garlic powder, and a little salt, a little cumin, a little cayenne, and a little cinnamon. Now, if that doesn't get you going. Cayenne and cinnamon. I like oh, it. Sweet great. and spicy all at once. Sweet and spicy, a little heat. Walnuts are high in omega-3 fatty acids, and it's in that chapter in the book. So the book has all anti-inflammatory recipes, just really easy, healthy recipes. We're going to coat our walnuts with our oil. And you could also use pecans as well. And pecans, I bet you didn't know, have highest antioxidants of any nut. Especially Louisiana pecans. Especially Louisiana uh -huh. pecans. Yes, yes. And I've been buying up on those Louisiana pecans, for sure. See, we're just going to toss it together. That's it? That's it, and then you put it on, oh my gosh, I can't wait for you to try this. And we're just gonna let them sit right here on a paper towel and drain off all the oil. And get all that good cinnamon and spice and a little bit of heat. Okay. That cayenne gives it just that perfect amount of kick. All right. That's done. If y'all have been following me, you know I'm an avocado addict. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. She, she has av avocado in everything. In everything. So what about the best guacamole you could ever have? It's mm. called Guacamami. We're going to kick it up with some... Guacamami. Yes, with some nutrition. Guacamami. There you go. We're going to kick it up with... It has... Uh, so we're going to use soybeans, which are really high in protein and high in fiber, so they're going to make this guacamole guacamami good for you. So okay. we're just going to put everything into our food processor. Okay. There's some soybeans. And there's your... Avocado. Dump it and in there. And salsa is such a quick, easy seasoning. Sort of keeps it festive. Garlic and yogurt. This Greek yogurt, yogurt. Oh. Greek yogurt. All Give right. it that creamy texture and a little lime juice to keep our avocado from turning. Okay, this is the part I like. I did go for it. Honey. What do you do? Right yeah. here? Yeah. Here we yeah. go. You ready? Let's see if it works. Mix it up. <laughs> Mix it up. Yeah, here we go. We got to go. in the kitchen. Right, 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 right. Okay. okay. That's it. Done. That's it. And this is so good, but we're going to make it all festive. So let's go see how we're serving it. We're going to keep it good for you and healthy. If we look over here, we have red pepper squares and cucumbers to get in the holiday spirit with our guacamole. And then of course, I brought you a great little present. These are so useful. These spiced walnuts, you could use them on salads. Now that's a great idea. Last minute gift, if you need to give a gift, or are you going to a party and you need a gift? A great hostess gift or teacher gift, but use them on salads. I'm having a dinner party, I'm gonna put them on salads. I'll tell you why I love the uh, spicy walnuts on a cheese tray, like a big crudite. Ooh, that's a great, that's a with great. With my glazed brie, of course. Mm -hmm. that. And then carrot cake for dessert. I've been craving carrot cake for sure, so. This is a really pretty presentation here too. Oh, and this carrot cake is so moist. Uh, you don't even need a mixer. Again, this is from my arthritis cookbook as well. And carrots are good for you, right? Yeah, and you don't even need a fork either to try it, huh? No, you don't. They're a little careful. They're moist, easy to make, and a mm. little tip there is buy pre-shredded carrots at the grocery now store. Now I know why Santa Claus is coming to town, to get some of this carrot cake. Yeah, I love carrot cake. Mm. So these are really three great, simple, healthy, diabetic, delicious, anti-inflammatory recipes for your Christmas. Uh, and they're so simple. I mean, I whipped them up in no time. Coming up, you won't be leaving cookies and milk for Santa anymore after you see Holly's recipe for blonde brownies. And, and for dessert for Santa. Ho, ho, ho. It doesn't get any better than these blonde brownies. It's the combination blonde of- Blonde brownies. Oh, they're so moist. You don't even need a mixer, but brown sugary, buttery brownies. Oh my gosh, it's just to die for you. That's coming up as Sunday Journal wishes you a Merry Christmas from Holly Clegg. We'll be right back. One way to get on Santa's nice list is to leave him some trim and terrific treats from Holly Clegg. Louisiana's cookbook queen joins us with her holiday countdown. Merry Christmas. Oh, Merry Christmas. And I'm really excited about today's recipes. Well, you know how to get on the jolly old man's good side with this stuff. Oh, I do. But you know what? It's mid-December. 
how hectic are the holidays, everybody's juggling. So this is my practical segment. You still need dinner on the table, and how many cookie swaps can you be invited to? <laughs> and you need a really easy cookie to be able to bring that's festive and fun. Well, I wait, have it all. Easy is a crock during the holidays. Easy is a crock. Well, I turned to Kitchen 101, which has a whole crock pot cooking segment section in it. So I know a lot of people like to do crock pots, and honestly, when I was writing this book, the truth of the matter is, I didn't know if I wanted to include a crock pot section, a slow cooker section. I put it on Facebook, and I had all this response, like, everybody, yes, yes, yes. So I immediately started testing uh, recipes. So this is sesame chicken we're going to make today. And I thought about this recipe because my kids, grandkids, my husband, everybody loves sesame chicken. It's a number one takeout item, but we can make it in our home well, we, so soon. Santa needs to be able to take it out on Christmas Eve. So. That's right. Okay. So we're going to start. You're just going to, uh, I like these liners for your crock pots or yeah, slow cookers. Neat idea, yeah. Right, so I eliminate sorry. the mess. And also it transfers easy. Okay, okay. so we're just gonna add chicken. And chicken. Right, and then any kind of chicken you want like to use? I use the chicken breast and you want them uh, skinless. You could cut them in pieces now if you're in a hurry and want it to cook a little quicker, or you can do it after. A little bit of onion here. A little bit of onion, ketchup. Ah, uh, we gotta have the ketchup. Ketchup. Um, and here's a little garlic. Dump in that garlic. And a little uh, crushed red pepper just to add You've a little bit. Gotta have heat. some heat, yeah. Yeah, a little olive oil. Okay. And then, of course, I use low-sodium soy sauce. Got What's great about this chicken, recipe, yeah. well, we have to get some honey. I'm going to show you a little And you got though. a trick about honey. You know how honey always sticks to everything. So what I do is I coat it with nonstick cooking spray. Now, that's a great idea. And then you just put your honey in. It calls for two-thirds of a cup. Uh, and I've used local Louisiana honey, of course. All right, and here we go. And then it just comes right out, look. And along with the ketchup, that's really gonna sweeten things up. Yes, it is. And you know what's great about this recipe? It's diabetic friendly too. You know, a lot of people don't realize eating healthy is not that difficult. This is a diabetic friendly recipe um, that's easy to do. And you ready to cook this up? Friendly. Cook it up, you're gonna put it on low for four to five hours. Boom, presto with TV. Then you wanna thicken the sauce so you take this is just water with a little cornstarch. And you always want to add cornstarch to a cold liquid. And then you just mix it, and you would just put it in here, pretend like that's done, put it in there, cook it about 10 minutes, and you're done. Now, here's our sesame chicken. You just garnish it with a little bit of uh, sesame Look at that. seeds. Look how pretty that is. And these are toasted. You can find toasted sesame seeds uh, in the spice section. Mm. And my husband said, you're making this with fried rice for dinner when I told him we were having <laughs> sesame chicken. I said, of course, darling. Turned to page 97 in my cookbook and we made fried rice. So you have the whole And this is there. a South Louisiana fried rice. Right. I happen to have some Louisiana crawfish. Ooh, so I bet you that's about good. adding crawfish to different recipes. Yeah. I added a little Louisiana crawfish to our fried rice. I uh, had it in the freezer. And, and for dessert for Santa. Ho, ho, ho. It doesn't get any better than these blonde brownies. It's the combination blonde of... brownies. Oh, they're so moist. You don't even need a mixer, but brown, sugary, buttery brownies. Oh, my gosh, it's just to die for. You put your little red and green M&Ms, and you have the best cookie swap recipe. It's simple to make. You don't need a mixer. You can whip it up with everyday ingredients, and you have a festive, fun, brown, sugary, buttery brownie. You won't be leaving cookies and milk for Santa anymore. You'll be leaving right. blonde and brownies. Right, and look how cute. This is my favorite. Favorite little spatula. It, it fits perfectly to get bar cookies out of the pan. Give me one. Of this one. Give me one. Of this one. Okay. I'll, oh, here, I'll, I'll use my fingers anyway. Look how good they melt in your mouth. Goodness, it doesn't get any better than this. You're gonna want this recipe as well. Tastes just like a brownie. So I have helped you this segment uh, with cooking on everyday recipes. Sesame chicken when you don't have time to cook dinner, and I have the perfect cookie swap recipe just for you. Santa's not gonna want to leave your house. No, I hope not. <laughs> Boy, everything tasted great. You know, Holly's new book is called Guy's Guide to Eating Well. For more on the book, along with other great holiday recipes and gift ideas, check out Holly's website. It's easy, hollyclegg.com. That's hollyclegg.com. And, of course, we wish her all the best in her fight against cancer. I'm John Pinstrack. Hope you have a great week, and we'll see you next week on Sunday Journal.